Hello? Hi. Welcome or welcome back. Fancy seeing you here. I decided, since I had my makeup done and I was ranty already, that we would go ahead and do Product Fails Part 2. So I've got a nice big old basket here. And we're going to dive right in. All right, so the look that I have on today, I actually filmed a get ready with me and I need to put my lip gloss back on. It is what I'm going to wear to an upcoming wedding. So if you're interested in that, beware. It's ranty, it's long, but it is already up on the channel. So that said, let's get some lip gloss on. All right, my hair can't be helped. We're gonna get into that a little bit more in this video, but I did cover that in a rant in that get ready with me. So without further ado, Let's talk about some products that did not work for me. I don't think they're gonna be in any particular order. We're just gonna go with it. And actually, let's knock this one out because it's an odd one. So if you're new here, hi, I am a child at heart. If you're not, then you know that in one of my recent favorite videos, I covered the Hello Grape Flavored Toothpaste, which is incredible. It tastes like grape soda, grape candy, there's no cooling effect. It's what I love to use when I don't want to use mint and have it affect the taste of whatever I'm drinking or eating right after, especially around lunchtime. And in that pursuit, I tried the Arc Enamel Protection Strawberry Daiquiri, which I was so excited about. Sounds great. I think this would be it for a lot of people, but it has that cooling sensation. And I get that that's to give like freshness to your breath. The grape cleans your mouth and you don't smell you don't have bad breath, but you don't have minty breath. This kind of still gives you the minty breath, so I'm gonna use it up, but I was really disappointed. I wanted it to be very strawberry, and I think I'm just gonna stick to the Hello Toothpaste because it's just great, and I know a couple of you were gonna try it, so let me know down below if you did and how you liked it. Then next is going to be really funny because I've used half of this up, but it is the Brave Body Hero line from, yeah, from Hero. I have their Mineral Melt Empowering Acne Prone Skin. This is their Daily Calm Hydration Lotion, and this is their Once Over Toner. I have used a ton of the toner, so I have given both of these products plenty enough time to do what I needed them to do. I have pretty bad KP and acne on my chest, shoulders, neck, and back. And I was looking for something that had some AHAs in it, some ingredients that would help calm that, exfoliate, just help the overall appearance and texture of my skin. These have, let's start with the moisturizer. So this has shea butter and almond oil for moisture, AHA and Bakuchiol for retexturizing, and Mighty Mineral Complex that balances bacteria with silver, malachite, and copper. All of that sounds amazing. This did absolutely nothing. This was nothing more than a traditional lotion for me, and that was really disappointing because, again, these are decently priced and you get a lot of product for that. There's 6.7 fluid ounces in here. It feels hefty. It goes a long way, all of that. But one of the most upsetting things about this was the scent. It smells like... It's definitely masculine scented, like it almost smells like a men's body wash, but not a good one. Like I would use my husband's Method C and Surf. I think that smells fantabulous. Fantabulous. Smells fabulous, but this, I don't know. And you can hear it's a very liquidy, like it's not liquidy. It's like silicone. Like you can hear the weight of it. I just... Mm, do not recommend it didn't do anything it smells bad it's just not good and then the once over toner i used this the most because i thought that this was really helping it has zinc pca aha bha and pha and then that mighty mineral complex again so the silver malachite and copper nothing it was the other it was the physical exfoliants that i was using that was doing the heavy lifting on the kp and acne this again same scent and even stronger than the lotion. You get more of kind of the ingredient scent in this. This is just the straight up like eighth grade boys cologne. Yeah, eighth grade boys cologne from like the 70s. I just, 
why is it scented? Make it unscented and then I might be more inclined to use it and try it again. But from what I can remember, this really doesn't do anything. All of the products that I use from Soft Services and then some of the more powerful glycolic acid lotions did way more for my body than that ever tried, even tried to do, you know, like pass on those, pass, pass, pass. The next is we're going to dive into skincare a little bit. I have three SPF products here. One of them is a tinted SPF, but I never got my SPF video up. It really didn't get the votes on the Google forms in my description box. And I didn't know if you would be interested in an SPF roundup this late in the season, although SPF should be worn every day. I'm an SPF queen. You can ask anybody in my personal life. They'll tell you that I'm always packing, you know, everyone should be protected. And I was really excited to try these products and unfortunately they weren't for me. So the first one up is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Sunscreen. I love the smell of these products and I need to remind myself. This doesn't have as strong of a scent as the rest of the watermelon line, but I was really excited about this. It is an SPF 50. It is chemical and mineral. It's got homosalate, octosalate, octocrylene, and zinc oxide, 12%. And I had really high hopes. It's great. It didn't break my skin out, but it stings the ever loving, you know what, out of my eyes. And even if I don't rub it all the way up into like my orbital bone, which I do with all of my mineral sunscreens because every inch of me needs slathered because I'm so fair, it migrates to my eye and it burns. So I'm going to be using this on my neck, chest, and body, but just to use it up, but I, I can't recommend this or get down with it. It just, no one has time for stingy eyes. And then the second is an all zinc sunscreen. I, there might be titanium dioxide. I don't know. Anyway, it's from Kinship. It is their self-reflect sport SPF. And I was really interested in this because when I first started my channel, I was really trying to get away from the Dr. Dennis Gross because it's super white casty, even on me. And I'm very fair. I'm very bronzed right now. But I wanted my sunscreen to have more benefits to my skin instead of just being a plain old sunscreen. And the triple ceramide moisturizing aspect of this is what really got me. Plus, it's a high SPF with 60. I really like to wear 50 or above, even though my beloved Live Tinted is only 30. This was just bizarre because it is so oily and the smell... Yeah, okay, once you blend it out, it smells like buttercream frosting that's very synthetic, if that makes sense, like old school vanilla. And it's not scented, I don't think. But this, I just, I can't put my finger on exactly what the scent is, but it's so off-putting to me, and the Live Tinted is not like that. That one smells sweet, but it's very pleasant. And I don't believe that that's scented and the Dr. Dennis Gross has no sense at all. So this, I just, ooh, I couldn't. And the oiliness, like it's even starting to break up in the bottle and it's just so oily and it stays oily. Like you can pick up oil and I need something that performs well under makeup and this was not it. So this, I don't even think I'm going to use up because I can't stand that feeling even on my body. So I would not recommend that. And it's a shame because I want to say that it's one of the most affordable that I've used because you do get 1.7 fluid ounces and I think it's definitely under 30. So I'm bummed about that, but I can't tell you how much it was not for me. Then last in the body category, and then we're gonna get into hair is, and I feel like a lot of people probably will disagree with this. It is the Necessaire the Body Serum. I have a couple of griefs with this, but also there's a couple of, there's like cons and pros. We're going to start with cons because it's a fail video, you know, I, it's hard to say because they say that this is a daily hyaluronic acid treatment for the skin, but I think it was my expectations that led me to this fail because it does have PHAs in it, a couple other ingredients that I was hoping would really help with the KP and acne and without heavy duty AHAs and exfoliants, this just doesn't do the trick. 
On the other hand, if you're someone who needs an extra layer of moisture and you don't mind an extra step, I can't be bothered. I'm looking for a cream or a lotion that does it all in terms of hydration then I think this is great. Um, and also you get 5.1 fluid ounces and it's 45, $45. My first bottle I got free and then I finished it up and I was like, I'll, I'll do a second one and I'll see if I truly think it makes a difference. It didn't. And that's so expensive for a body treatment. That's 5.1 ounces. You're going to fly through this. But if you're using it on your face and you see a, a difference in your face, then I absolutely think it's a phenomenal price. You get five times the amount of a normal serum. I am a hot mess. Brings it down to less than $10 for a serum. So highly recommend it if you're using it as a face treatment. However, it has a lot of niacinamide in it and my facial skin does not like niacinamide. So not for me. I'm going to try to use it up. I'll definitely use it. It does add hydration. It might come in handy in the cooler months, but it's just a spendy product and I didn't see enough from it to really make it worth it, you know. And then let's talk hair. So I just went on that really long rant, but I'm going to recap it here because it is context and context is important. My hair is looking real crazy right now, even though I washed it less than 24 hours ago. And it is because my beloved shampoo, which if you're new here, hi, I really only use two, sometimes three products in my hair, which is my shampoo, my conditioner. And then on days where it's an SOS, which I should have used today is the Orbe dry shampoo. So I actually tried these two products before my beloved shampoo got discontinued and I'm spiraling because I get very bad cystic hormonal breakouts on my scalp if I use the wrong product if I don't wash enough it's very similar to my facial skin which makes sense but it gets tricky right because you need something that's not going to upset the skin on your scalp but is also not going to dry out and make your hair look crazy and that's a fine balance. My skin all over my body needs a lot of moisture, but it can't be too occlusive or too heavy or too heavy in certain oils or my skin does not agree with it and my hair. So I have very fine hair. It gets weighed down easy. When I saw this brand, I was so excited and they're now at Alta, which makes them even more exciting. But I actually ordered these through their site and it was the trial size of their skin caring shampoo and their skin caring deep conditioner. For drier hair types the shampoos for all hair types and it is the brand scene it's dermatologist created and tested it says it won't clog pores which i have never seen a shampoo talk about that so i thought i was the only one out here with cystic acne on my head you know anyway there's no fragrance very minimal ingredient list it has squalane which my skin really loves for hydration that's not too heavy scalp broke out like crazy and it didn't do anything for my hair the conditioner did not moisturize my hair whatsoever like whatsoever and it's very easy for my hair to soak up moisture because one it's very dry but two it's very fine this i would absolutely pass on i would not use this unless your hair needs little to no moisture and in that point i would say you could go without a conditioner for the level that that gives honestly the shampoo i might try it again in the interest of what has happened recently that I'm not very happy about. However, I'm nervous because it's probably definitely going to break my scalp out. I don't know if it's because it didn't clean it enough or there's something in it that it doesn't like, but there's no sulfate, silicones, phthalates, parabens, dyes, animal testing, color safe, gluten-free, vegan, doesn't clog pores, all that good stuff. They just came out with body care. I'd love to see them expand the body care line and I might test that, but this is a no from me dog then moving back into skincare one final time i have the bioma balancing face mist triceramide complex probiotics and allantoin this i picked up when i saw it first come out at target so this brand everything about it stuck out to me i love the packaging it's so fun it's probably very gen z but it's fun. I like the square shape. It looks nice kind of sitting on your vanity. And I was interested in this because this is like a third of the cost of my Fit Glow C Ceramide toner. And it has the ceramide, it has allantoin, it has probiotic ferment. 
and they're super this is what really got me they're super transparent with their ingredient list they put all of the percentages if that's focusing on the side of their package and they tell you or no not percentages i'm sorry they tell you the ingredient and then what the purpose of the ingredient is in the formula which i really appreciate there's glycerin there's sorbitol, ceramide, cholesterol. Cholesterol was another thing. A lot of these really expensive moisturizers that people rave about, they have a triple lipid complex, but complex, but they also offer that cholesterol. So I was really interested in that. Just really good ingredients. Lactic acid for a pH adjuster. Just everything about this. And you're supposed to shake it up really well. The the pump is really fun because it's like juicy and big. Usually you get those like little guys. The mist is kind of aggressive until you get a couple out and then it's a beautiful mist. You can't even see it. Maybe if I do this. Yeah, beautiful mist if you get it far enough away. But that's, that's what I can't, I don't even know if this is good for my skin because I can't stand the scent. It is not fragrance at all. It smells like the ingredients but it almost smells like, let's do this. It smells like plastic. I don't wanna smell like plastic and I don't want my products to smell like I'm spraying plastic on my face. And it's a shame because again, it's under $20, I believe. It might even be under 15 and it was such a great opportunity to dupe out another product. Granted, that one has C-derived ingredients, which my skin really loves. This just ugh, was a flop. All day it was a flop. Let's talk about let's talk about some lip care, and then we're gonna get into makeup. Lip care. Let's talk about it. Two are from Tarte. I want to love Tarte. There are some things back in the day I loved from Tarte, as we all probably did. I just can't get down with Tarte. I'm bored with Tarte. Nothing that they've come out with really interests me, and. I think there's so many better products out there, even from indie brands that just blow Tarte out of the water. First up is the <laughs> CH2O Balm. And I got this as a free sample from Sephora, I think. The color's really pretty. It's like a, a dusty kind of warm rose. Smells kind of like peppermint, which I usually don't get down with, but I didn't mind. What I mind is that this is not moisturizing to my lips whatsoever, and it's just a formula that's like a, a throwaway formula, if you will. Like, there's nothing special about that. It doesn't hydrate. I, I don't have time, you know? I don't have time for lip products. I have so many lip products that I get excited to use, and that's just not one of them, and I would not recommend it. The second is one that is raved about by many on social media and all of the descriptions sounded perfect cushiony gel-like super moisturizing only thing i need i got it and there's so many things i don't like about it and it's the sugar rush lip balm and i got it in clear lip sip vegan lip balm in clear they're like ten dollars i i'm not a fan of the packaging it's it's just basic i, I don't know I don't need something to be like super luxe, but I need it to be like, I don't know. This in granted sugar rush is meant to be for a younger audience. I know that. It's just not for me. The scent is It's a really interesting scent. It's like sweet and tangy, almost like a sweet tart, but not in a way that I like. There's I don't know. I'm going to pop the notes on the screen if they talk about it, but I don't like the scent. So if it's going to be by my lips, you guys see me do the sniff all the time. I do that throughout the day if something smells good, and that is why I like it. I want to catch a whiff of something nice, you know? This, I don't like the scent of. And the texture. I don't think that this is moisturizing. <laughs> it's thick. It feels thick on the lips. I'm going to... It's just not... There's. I don't... I'll check the ingredient list. I'll pop some up on the screen if I am leading you astray here, but there's nothing in this that's really going to condition, soothe, or heal the lips. It's really just something to lock in moisture. So if you're someone who just needs to lock in what you already got, yeah, fine, it's a, it's a lip chap. But if you're someone like me and you need something to like really go to work on your lips, that's not gonna be enough. 
I would highly recommend something like the Fit Glow, the Olivia Palermo does better, the Lana Lips line does way better, the In Beauty Lip Glaze. I would rather pay $5 extra and get a little bit of a tint, an amazing scent and benefits of the ingredients that are in that formula over this any day, any day. And then the last one I'm actually kind of bummed about, I got a package from Beekman, I always get the date wrong, 1802, because I really love their body care in, especially in the cooler months when my skin really dries out. I haven't cracked open into those because I'm trying to get through my kind of more lightweight products first, but I cracked into this as soon as the order came in. And the scent is funky. It smells kind of more like the ingredients, but like they tried to scent it and it just didn't work out or something. I don't know. But it smells odd and not moisturizing at all. And while the color is nice, I need my lip products to offer me either a really statement color that I can't find in other formulas like the About Face or I need it to moisturize my lips. Because again, I don't have time. I have such dry lips that if I'm gonna wear a tinted or colored product and it not moisturize my lips, I'm gonna die by the end of the day because every time I reapply, it's not doing anything to help condition my lips. And at the end of the day, my lips are so dry that a night mask is probably not gonna like undo the damage. So I was just kind of disappointed in that. I do wanna try their other one that comes in a squeeze tube. It's like a probiotic. Maybe that that one would be more moisturizing, but that one, this, what is this, dewy gloss? No, it's a tinted lip oil. It just wasn't an moisturizing enough for me. Not like a, I'm not mad about it. I am mad about the tar. I'm not mad about that. If you catch my drift. Moving into eyeshadow. Charlotte Tilbury, across the board, the cream ones. I just, I kind of get the hype because the texture is really nice to feel as you're rubbing it in. Very moussey and creamy but they're just not special enough. I don't mind a more satin, like that looks really pretty and I don't mind a more satin finish and I really like this color, but they crease and they don't last very long on me. And Oyster Pearl was probably the biggest disappointment and I don't have it in here because I've already regift, not regifted, given that to a friend who absolutely loves it. I just, that color was disappointing. I have since just, I would recommend phytosurgeons over that and phytosurgeons is half the cost and you're supporting an amazing business. So like, I don't know. We've talked about it a few times at this point. Charlotte Tilbury to me is overrated. Then next up is the Fit Glow base products, the concealer and the foundation. I was so excited for both of those to finally try the concealer. But then when they released the foundation, I tried them. If you don't know, you can get samples on the FitGlow website, type sample into the search bar and you'll be able to get samples of the color correctors, the concealer and the foundation and a couple of their skincare and body care products. I think it's $7 or $12 or something like that, but it's great if you need to find your shade match or you don't want to invest like I wasn't ready to invest in like a $50 foundation or a $48 concealer. They just don't work for me. They're it's so bizarre because they're very emollient and they have emollient ingredients in them, but they're drying on my skin. They just look dry. I get a much more natural finish with NARS and Rose Ink, which is crazy because those are more matte products. Maybe not the NARS, but definitely the Rose Ink. And those just weren't for me. I'm really happy for the people they're for because they do have skincare benefits in those formulations and I love Fit Glow. I love Fit Glow. It breaks my heart to not like a product from them, but those were just... Then next up, I kept these in here. I am going to give these to someone, rehome them to someone who will appreciate them more, but I really wanted to talk about this subject because in case anyone ever wonders why we don't use this on my channel or I don't purchase these, this is why, and it hurts my soul because there's so much that I do love about these, but it is the Natasha Denona eyeshadow. I have the mini retro and the mini gold palette here. Don't come for me and say that these are different formulas. I have owned the Safari palette, the big one, the gold palette, the big one, these palettes, the midi palette, the 
uh, mini that's like bigger than this, I've literally owned each iteration of her palettes throughout the history of Natasha Denona. And why I kept buying them is because her color stories are phenomenal, phenomenal. Look at this green shade. You do not find this green shade often and it is gorgeous. Look at this shade. Look at this shade. I could say this for all of these. These are gorgeous nuanced shades and her color stories are fan freaking tastic. Safari, I didn't know you could love a color story as much as I loved Safari when it came out. I could not believe my eyes. They're so nuanced, especially this retro palette. Like that is stunning. But here's what I don't like about her formula. Number one, the lasting time on these is trash on my eyes and I have tried priming them, but it's hard for me to want to work even harder at getting them to stick around when I have formulas like Hindash, like Anastasia, like Aether, that I don't have to work at all and they last all day and they don't get muddy. The second is these get muddy so fast because these are very pigmented powdery formulas that are not creamy. The Anastasia is very powdery, but it ends up super blendable and creamy and is conducive to the way that I like to blend eyeshadow. These are more for someone who placed them down in a specific section and barely tap out the edge of the placement to get them to blend together without turning muddy. Again, it's not for me and I'm not willing to put in the work that is needed when I have shadows that I don't have to do that for. And I'm, I'm getting to the point where I don't wanna change how I do makeup to fit a product. The product needs to conform to my way of doing makeup. Do you know what I mean? I'm buying it. I'm the customer. But yeah, I, I vow from this point forward to not purchase any, although her color stories get me every time. Every time. All right, and then actually I skipped over one of those SPF products and I have a blush to go with it and it is from the brand Tower 28. Now, if you are not new, you know that I absolutely love the SOS serum and the SOS spray. I know that you can get hypochlorous acid for cheaper from other brands, but I really love those things, especially the serum. I would be, I would have to search because I don't believe I've seen in my kind of perusing and recent searches, another brand that does a serum with hypo hypochlorous acid. I know there are sprays out there, but I, I just really love the Tower 28. And I like supporting that company. I believe in that company. I like the ethics of the company. However, the Sunny Days Tinted SPF was a total fail for me. The texture looks terrible on my skin. Again, it's almost like it's too emollient for my skin. My skin, again, likes hydration, but to a, a level. And then it's like, no, you have to live in this range. And something like the oil-free gel foundation from Chantecaille or the Rare Beauty Hydrating Tinted SPF Moisturizer, that's what I would put against this and the Rare Beauty wins all day. Because the Rare Beauty almost hydrates in the same way that the Chantecaille does. They're not dupes for each other, but they live in the same category for me in my makeup collection. And it beats this out tenfold. And that makes me very sad because again, I love Tower 28 and the internet loved this product. It just wasn't for me. And I'm going to see if my sister would like to give this a better home. In the same vein, I don't have one with me because I decluttered them long time ago. When Tower 28 first launched, I picked up the blushes, the lip gloss, and the spray. The spray has been with me for two plus years now. This has been with me a long time, so honestly, it needs thrown out. But as the Beach Please and Magic Hour, I had another shade, and I was tempted to get the bronzer and some of the new shades, but I just don't like blush formulas that don't set down or don't sink into the skin. This remains very tacky on the skin, and it's kind of like the old school cream blushes in the kind of clean or green world, and I, I can't, I can't deal. It doesn't last very long because of it. Your hair sticks in the product. It's just overall tacky and sticky and transfer. And I just, again, don't have time for it. When I have phytosurgence that is uh, pretty close to the same color, only more nuanced and 
does not remain tacky, does not transfer, and looks fabulous. So she's out. All right. I think it's good to film product fails when you're fired up. You know, the truth really comes out, and it might be a little harsh. I hope I wasn't very harsh. These are just the products that I have tried the last few months, really since that last, uh, em not empties, really since that last product fails went up. I hope this is helpful. I want to be helpful. Not everything is going to be amazing and wonderful and you need this in your life. I try to reserve that. I do get very excited about products that work, however, but I hope this is helpful. I hope that I gave enough detail for you to make an informed decision on if this product is for you or not. I did offer some alternatives from brands and products that I think are better, like way better, honestly. And yeah, let me know. Let me know if these work for you and if you have tips that you want me to try. I will be honest in saying that you probably know by now that there are some that I'm not going to touch again. But let me know your thoughts down below. If you love one of these products, please don't be upset. It just didn't work for me and it is what it is, you know? I will ask and plea for you to please let me know if you have a silicone free shampoo that you like if especially if you have a sensitive scalp i'm on the hunt i have native shea moisture and drunk elephant that i'm testing out now the shea moisture is out because it's too heavy on my scalp and i'm broken out now natives up next and then drunk elephant so i hope that you're having an amazing start to your week and i will see you in the next one bye